So today we'll be talking about the Giants' undrafted free agents from 2020. So we talked about the draft class a lot the past few days, but now I'm going to talk about the undrafted guys. The Giants signed a lot of players, like 15 or so it looks like on this list. So a lot of undrafted free agents to get to. Hopefully we get through this video somewhat quickly. Of course, I made a highlight video for all these guys, so I have you know familiarity with watching them. There's not too much I can say in, in great detail about all these players, but there's a chance maybe a couple of them make the roster. So it is worth getting into. So hopefully you guys enjoy enjoy this video comment your favorite player in the undrafted group and let me know who it is and let's get into it so we'll start with case cookus and yes i did turn the lights off in here it is too bright i, I prefer the dark honestly the lighting in my room is terrible i wish i could still record in my basement but since the quarantine my brother has his whole gaming set up down there so he can't really move that so here i am stuck in my room but anyway in the case cookus the quarterback from northern arizona he's six four just over 200 pounds so they had one full game of him on youtube which is of course the one i watched and a highlight tape so that's basically what i'm going off of here there's not much tape for a lot of these guys some of them more than others one guy didn't even have any highlights on youtube so i'm going based off what was on there and what was given to me so his mobility was good he had a really good touchdown to interception ratio that's like five to one maybe a little better if i'm that's correct so that's definitely nice to see um he was pretty good at throwing on the run he definitely was seemed like a pat Shermer type quarterback honestly which is kind of funny but he kind of had that case keenum vibe to him a little bit so i, I would say that about him definitely not our coach anymore but just saying uh stepping up in the pocket his pocket presence was pretty good i think he had a fumble in that game as well so that's the not so good part but in terms of stepping up in the pocket and understanding where to you know go basically and, and what's safe and when to step up he was pretty good at that in my opinion the bad part the competition level so i was unsure i've never watched a guy from uh, northern arizona before so this was new for me he did have a lot of underthrows and arm strength issues that was the big thing for me so that's definitely concerning i mean once you get to the nfl I think that stuff is pretty important. It's not the be-all, end-all, but, you know, you could see a guy like Drew Brees get away with it because he's super accurate in the short-to-intermediate passing game. But Drew Brees is 40 years old. I mean, this guy's probably 23, 24. I expected a better arm, but we didn't see it, unfortunately. There were some uh, underthrows in the game I watched. And, um, you know, he's definitely inconsistent on some throws. Some throws got away from him, so, you know, it wasn't that good. I mean, he had some bright things about his game, but then some things I didn't like, to be honest. So the chance of making the roster, in my opinion, I did this for everybody, and that's based off what I think their talent is, which is, you know, kind of dumb to say because I'm only giving these guys one or two games most, but this is from my eyes and, and my talent evaluating skills which probably aren't that good but yeah at least I watched them so I could say that at least but um I give them a 10% chance of making the team I mean they have Daniel Jones they have Colt McCoy they have Alex Tanney I, I don't see you I don't see the Giants carrying uh four quarterbacks next year that would make no sense to me his you know honestly best chance of making it is an injury to somebody so I mean that's basically the only way I could see him making this team he had good numbers at school but then again it's the competition level and I don't I think the arm strength is too much in question to be honest I I would give it about a 10% chance that he actually makes the final 53-man roster for 2020. Next, we will dive into the wide receivers, which I do think the Giants brought on a few good receivers here from this undrafted class. I think there was three of them, and I liked all of them, honestly. You guys know I like Ben Victor from Ohio State, who happens to be Alex Mack's teammate here. Austin Mack, not Alex. Alex Mack's the center for the Falcons, my bad. Um, the wide receiver, Austin Mack. Ben Victor was his teammate in college, of course, at Ohio State. I'm a fan of him based off my other videos, but Austin Mack is a guy who, when I went back and watched him, definitely caught my eye for sure. So he's 6'2", 215. It's not he's not the biggest receiver, but in terms of what the Giants have right now, he's probably one of the bigger guys. I know Golden Tate's 5'10, maybe 5'11 on a good day, and then we have Sterling Shepard, who I think is 6'1. Who else do we have? I think Corey Coleman can't be that tall. Uh Cody Kaur, don't I don't think he's that tall either. So this might be one of our bigger receivers on the roster if he were to make it. So the good things about him is route running and getting open is very good. I like that. I mean, getting open is probably the most important part of a receiver's job in the NFL, in my opinion. Of course, catching and you know having athletic ability and speed is definitely a big thing as well. But I think if you can get open, you can definitely have a role in the NFL. So I like that about him a lot. He's sure-handed from what I saw. Made a lot of tough catches. That's the next part, actually. Made a lot of tough catches, especially on the sideline. Did a good job of keeping his feet in bounds on some tough uh, sideline catches. And as I said, decent size for an outside guy. He's not the 6'5", 6'6", guy that we all you know would love to have on this team. But still, if, if I can get that, you know, a guy that gets open over a guy that's four inches taller, give me the guy that gets open, honestly. So I'll take that. The bad, not a lot of college production. You can see his stats on the bottom right here. His athleticism and speed are all right, but 
they're not elite. So he's not going to have, like, you know, he's not going to be this ridiculous receiver who's going to get, you know, 1,500 yards one day in the NFL in a single season. But he can have a solid role as a number three, number four wide receiver who can hopefully get open on a good amount of, like, man coverage routes and stuff like that. So I do think his chances of making the team, I have it at 60%, which is pretty damn high compared to everybody else. So I do think that because right now, you know, the Giants don't have much at wide receiver. I'm looking at the depth chart right now. Um, Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate. I forgot about Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton's probably, what, 6'1", 6'2". He can't be that tall. Corey Coleman and Cody Kors. So that's five guys right there. I think you need at least six wide receivers. So it seems like right now there is at least one open spot. And I do think, you know, they did not draft a wide receiver. And I think Austin Mack might be the best one from this undrafted free agent group. So unless they sign somebody else or trade for somebody else, I think Austin Mack has a pretty decent chance of making this team, actually. Up next is a guy I've talked about many times on this channel, Benjamin Victor, the Ohio State wide receiver, 6'4", 200 pounds. So I think he has, you know, pretty good experience. He's been around for a long time, since 2016, four years at Ohio State, 6'4", frame. He's had good coaching, of course. I mean, I don't know what Ohio State does with their wide receivers, but they always seem to translate well to the NFL for some reason. Very good on contested catches. High pointing the ball was good. Uh, he makes some guys miss in space. He has a pretty nice little juke move for him. I mean, it's not too bad. It's not too great but it's not bad either for a guy who's 6'4". And he seems like a capable run blocker from what I saw at least. He's probably not the best at it. He won't be Larry Fitzgerald, but I'm sure he can be capable at it. I saw that from our next receiver as well. We'll get into that later. So the bad part, as I've always said, is his play strength. I mean, he's only 200 pounds. I think had nine bench reps, which isn't that much compared to everybody else. And could be a better route runner for sure. I mean, most of his highlights are on deep balls, so I get that. And, um, you know, lack of elite explosiveness. So that's another thing. It's, it's good to be explosive. You know, look at Odell Beckham. He was pretty damn explosive explosive had himself a nice career for the Giants so when you don't have uh, explosiveness it might hurt you but he's also 6'4 6'5 whatever it is 6'4 so I mean you don't need explosiveness but it definitely helps and his you know he does have a history of some drop issues so that's something I have to bring up as well wish his route running was a little better but when you see that 6'4 200 pound frame I wish he was a little heavier but still um you know the AJ Green body build type you know body type I meant to say so I mean I, I think there's something to work with here. I don't think he's like a lost cause. I, I just think Austin Mack, I always say Alex, Austin Mack is more of a NFL-ready prospect right now. I do think that Ben Victor has the higher ceiling, but in terms of them being ready by this July or August, I do think Austin Mack might outplay him, hence the reason I had him at 60% making the team. So Ben Victor got more playing time last year, had six touchdowns. They threw some goal line fades to him. He was a good red zone option and stuff, so he might have a role on this team. I'm not sure. We'll see if he makes it. I would love to see him play in the preseason and see, you know, how he deals with getting open against, you know, borderline NFL talent if it's third and fourth string guys, but we'll see. So I'm interested, though. This is definitely a guy that I would love to have on the team. It just depends if he can get open, if his hands are consistent, and, um, you know, definitely the playing strength. Can he can he beat press coverage? That's the biggest thing here. So that's pretty much all the concerns about him. A lot of upside as well. So I'd, I'd be interested, but I would give him a 40% chance of making this team. Up next is Derek Dillon, the LSU wide receiver. I put Oregon in the highlight video because, of course, I cannot make a video without having at least one mistake. So there you go. There's the mistake. But for Dillon, there was only one game of his on tape. It was against Florida, I believe. It was like a three-minute video of showing every play. So I probably saw about... 15 to 20 routes of him and most of them are run blocking anyway so there's not much I can take away here but what I saw was a guy well he's 5'11 185 pounds to say that first but the good I saw in his game seemed to have good hands he caught everything that was thrown his way on like four or five targets so I like that of course um did well at getting open so I mean he was strictly a slot guy which I have in the negative negative part he was you know he's 5'11 does not weigh a lot so he might be limited as a slot receiver and the Giants right now of course have golden Tate taking up that spot and if Golden Tate were gone it'd probably be Sterling Shepard in that spot so like the Giants right now just have so many guys that just play the same role basically at wide receiver so I'm not sure if Derek Dillon has a fit here I do like him as a player I'm just not sure he has a fit on the Giants which is why I have him like 40% lower than a guy like Austin Mack and even 20% lower than Ben Victor but 
he's not that bad of a player. He did show some run blocking potential. There was a play, and I put in a highlight video if you saw it, of him like basically blindsiding a guy and knocking him on his butt. So that was pretty fun to watch. But um, you know, seemed like a pretty good run blocker for sure. The bad part is, as I said, he's strictly a slot guy. Not much playing time or production. His highest uh, receiving yard season was 307 last year, or two years ago now, I guess you can say, on 22 receptions and only a high of two touchdowns in one season. And he once again had two touchdowns last year. So production wasn't great, but then again, you're on this really good team with really good receivers. So that's kind of what happens. I mean, you know, when you get stuck on a good team, sometimes that'll happen to you. But when he played, at least, he looked all right. So I'm not sure if he'll make this team. Might be a bit too undersized and restricted to that slot area. And there's just too many guys on this particular team. He might go to another organization and succeed. I can see that because he seems like a pretty good player. So I, I could see that happening. I'm just not sure he'll make this Giants roster. Up next is Dana Levine, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, defensive end from Temple. He'd probably be an edge player here, of course. He's 6'4", 235. So he kind of reminded me of Cam Brown, who we drafted in the 5th or 6th round. I think it was 6th round, I believe, from Penn State. So he kind of has a similar body type. The playing style isn't exactly the same because they were using different roles. But in terms of body type, I feel like they were somewhat similar. So there's you know some, something to go off of right there. I'm sure some of you have watched Cam Brown's highlights, at least. So... His length is definitely a good thing, 6'4", long arms, so that's definitely a good thing. Good speed off the edge. He was you know, good at getting off on uh, from his stance. I think he was playing in a three-point stance most of the time, if I remember correctly. So he was very good at getting off real quick. And then, you know, he's pretty strong for his body type. I saw him, you know, basically bull rush some guys. And, you know, for a guy with a lanky body type, you don't expect that to happen too much. You don't expect a guy bull rushing with success, but that's exactly what I saw from Levine. And his numbers got better every year, so I like seeing that as well. It's definitely something I look for in people's stats, especially college players, is when they get better every year because sometimes, like, I don't know when this guy started playing football. Sometimes guys are just late bloomers or they start playing football late. So if he's picking up on it later in his career and just getting better and better every year, that's something you got to love. Like, that was one of my concerns with Carter Coughlin is that he had this great 2018 season, but then in 2019 took a step back. So that kind of makes you wonder, like, why is this happening? But a guy like uh, Dana Levine here has been getting better every season. So the bad, he could struggle shedding blocks in the NFL. I was surprised about his bull rush, and I guess being strong in that regard, but Kenny shed blocks from NFL guards and tackles. We'll have to see about that. And he wasn't dominant in college. I mean, his highest sack total was five and a half. 11 tackles for loss isn't that great, but it's it's pretty good. It's not great, though. So, I mean, he did have a pretty good season last year, but never was quote-unquote dominant. The Giants right now have some players in his position right now. They have actually a lot of guys. I mean, O'Shane Zimenez, Lorenzo Carter, and Kyler Fackrell. Who else did we draft? Carter Coughlin's there now. Um, so that's like four guys right there. Let me see who else we have at outside linebackers. I'm definitely forgetting somebody. Um, and we don't have a great pass rusher, obviously, or a great edge player. So let's see. Of course, my computer's like frozen, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Maybe somebody else we drafted. We drafted two linebackers or three linebackers, inside linebackers, though. So I'm pretty sure this is all we got for outside linebackers. So maybe he makes the team. I put his chances at 30%. I feel that's good enough. So we'll see if he makes it. I want to see if his strength can translate to the NFL. I feel that's a big thing. So if he can do that, he definitely might have a role on this team. Next, we have Nico Lelos, who was listed at edge. I don't see him at edge in the NFL. I think he'd be more of a defensive end, but I guess we'll wait and see on that one. He's 6'5", 270, so the good parts, he looked very strong against his opponents. Now, he wasn't playing the best competition out there. He was not playing, you know, Big Ten, Pac-12 type talent here, but against the tackles he was playing, he looked pretty good, so I'll give him that. He had a good bull rush move, of course, good energy, was always hustling. He was a smart player. He uh, had some nice plays of sniffing out screens and also had this one play where the quarterback tried to pitch it to the tight end, and he was all over. I think it might have been a running back, though. Running back or tight end tried to pitch it, but he was all over it, so I like seeing that. Good football IQ was always wrapping up on his tackles. The bad part, as I touched on, the competition level was not that good. And I do think, you know, he won't have the ability to steamroll these tackles in the NFL. He was doing that in college, though, at Dartmouth or Dartmouth, Dartmouth. I think Dartmouth sounds right. But, um, yeah, he was he's not going to be able to just roll over guys like he did at, at college. It won't be happening. So his competition will definitely get a lot harder. I'm not sure if he has the athleticism to be a great NFL player. He definitely could be a role player and a bench player, but I don't see him ever being a starter. Um, you know, he could be a bit lighter on his feet, I wish. I mean, he is 
270, so I, I get it from that perspective. I do think he's more of a stronger player than, a, than an agile player, so I have to put that out there. I think his chances of making the team are probably about 25%. As I said, I do think he's more of a defensive line player, if I had to guess. And the Giants right now, of course, have a lot of defensive line players, so there's not really a need for him. If he just plays out of his mind in the preseason, then, of course, they might take him on the team. But considering there's not a need for his position and I think he needs to be a bit more athletic I don't necessarily think he'll make this team but I hope he proves me wrong I hope he does make this team and obviously has somewhat of an impact that would be nice but if I had to get my honest guess here I'd probably say 25% chance he makes the team Next, we have Javon Leak, the running back from Maryland, six feet tall, 215 pounds. So the good parts about him, he had a lot of success as a return man. If you watch his highlights, he had a bunch of returns. Not all of them were for touchdowns, but some very solid returns for 50, 60 yards even. So I like that about him. He might have a role on this team just for that. Um, he has tons of big plays on his highlights, so he's definitely like a home run threat. He seemed pretty fast. His 40 time, I don't think, was that impressive, but on tape, at least, he looked a lot faster. There was a guy, of course, we drafted Xavier your McKinney who looks faster than you know four six three or whatever his 40 time was but you know he might have just had a bad 40 I think a lot of times with 40 yard dashes it comes down to technique I'm not necessarily sure that should translate to your exact speed in the NFL but that's the way they go about it of course so the bad parts he wasn't breaking any tackles he wasn't super agile basically what I'm trying to say is he wasn't doing anything you know, wasn't going above the call of duty, basically. Like, he was basically following his blocks, hitting the hole, and just running straight. It wasn't like he was doing things like, you know, making guys miss and breaking tackles and looking impressive. It was just a guy following his blocks, which is his job, but he wasn't going above and beyond what he was supposed to do. So that's kind of concerning. Um, his speed wasn't overly impressive. It's not like I was watching David Wilson or, you know, Chris Johnson on the Titans run the ball here. Um, he was never a bell cow in college. His highest attempts was 102 attempts last year which is a decent amount but that's not really a lead back type number right there so I'm not sure if he's an every down type build I necessarily I don't really see a role for him on this team I mean right now we do have Deion Lewis we have Saquon Barkley we have John Hilleman we have um, Wayne Gallman for now so there's already four backs on this team I'm sure there's going to be some other people in camp as well so I'm not necessarily sure he'll make this team I gave it a 30% chance because I do think with the um, returning upside he has I do think they might take him just to be a return man it's a long shot but it could happen so I'll give it a 30% chance Next, we have Kyle Murphy, the offensive lineman. He played left tackle, at least in his highlights, for Rhode Island. 6'3", 316 pounds. I wish he was a bit taller to play tackle. Might be a guard, though, in the NFL if he were to make it. So I put his highlights in there, of course. I did go back and watch one full game of him, so I was like, I can't just list all good things. I need to actually watch him play a full game, and luckily there was like one or two games of him um, showing the you know, the full game, not just his highlight. He did have a good highlight tape, though. That's basically what I went off of in the highlight video, but in terms of watching every play, the, uh, the bad parts were the lateral movements. He wasn't that quick moving to his left and right, so I have to point that out. He could get beat inside occasionally, which is definitely not what I want to see from an offensive tackle. As I did say, though, he probably would be a guard in the NFL. I don't see him being a tackle in the NFL. Uh, his competition level, I mean, playing at Rhode Island, I once again have not watched too many Rhode Island you know, football games in my life, so I can't really say um, I know too much about the competition or even that team, so there has to be that brought into it. And I think driving on his blocks, he wasn't really too good at that. He did a pretty good job of anchoring down, but in terms of driving and just keeping his feet moving, I wasn't really, I didn't see it too much, honestly. But for the good parts, he was very strong, had good hands. Um, he did lock his arms nicely after his punch, so he, once he got his arms on his defenders, he did a good job of locking them and just keeping them there. He can seal off run lanes in the uh, in the running game, so of course you like that. And he finds ways to uh, recover after he's beat. So I saw maybe a couple of plays where it seemed like he was beat right off the jump, but then he somehow recovered. We see that a lot with Andrew Thomas. Of course, these are different players, but to have that attribute to your game is uh, is pretty good as well. And pretty light on his feet, so he's not, as I said, he's not good laterally, but he's He's also not that slow either, so he does have some speed to him, especially for a guy that's 316 pounds, so there are some good things, there are some bad things, he had a lot of uh, pancakes on his um, 
on his highlight film, so that was cool to see as well. But then again, I don't know the competition he's going against here, so we'll see if that translates to the NFL. I do think he can survive against, you know, third or fourth string guys in preseason, and if he plays out of his mind, he might make the team. But I gave it a 20% chance. I mean, if you take out the guys we drafted and we still had, like, Ken Fleming as a starter, I would probably put his chances to, like, 40%. But considering we drafted all these offensive linemen, not necessarily sure there's a, a spot for him on this team. Maybe a practice squad guy. I can definitely see that happening because he does seem like a good player. He's not a bad player at all, in my opinion. So I do think he might make the practice squad if the Giants had a crazy amount of injuries on the offensive line. Maybe he starts in a couple of games or something like that. But we'll see. I do think the chances are slim because of who we drafted. But we shall see. Up next is Ryson John, the tight end slash wide receiver from Simon Fraser, I guess you pronounce that. So he's 6'7", 220. This is a guy that caught many people's eyes, at least from what I saw on Twitter, because of the 6'7 size and the potential to play tight end. So... Honestly, there was one video of him out there on YouTube that I could see. It was like, it was weird. It was kind of like a camcorder on the sideline. It wasn't like an official looking thing. So I'm not sure about this Simon Fraser, Fraser school. So I'm not really sure like what type of division this actually was and all that stuff. But what I saw from him, he looked like he was a really good athlete. Of course, has the great length at 6'7". He was really good on jump balls, contested catches, but you know, then again, it was over guys a lot shorter than him, so you have to put that in there as well. Actually, the funny part about watching his highlights were the quarterback on the team must have had the easiest job in the world because there were at least a few plays where he kind of just like looked like he threw it with his eyes closed and just chucked it up right to Rice and John, who happened to be there you know, for the ball and, and ended up catching a few touchdowns that way. So he has pretty good speed. I don't know what it would be on a 40 time. I don't know how it would translate to NFL players, but his speed looked all right. He definitely wasn't slow. Um, Position versatility, so of course, you know, it could be a tight end, could be a wide receiver. I think uh, 220 is kind of light for a uh, tight end, but at the same time, I mean, Evan Ingram can't weigh that much more, I feel like, and he is 6'7", so I have to give him that. The bad part, the competition level, I have no idea who he was playing against. You know, I, I really have no idea. So I can't, like, put this on a level against what the NFL would be like. I have no idea. His route running, I mean, I really can't say whether these routes would translate to the NFL. That's something I have a big question about because most of his highlights were just him catching jump balls on go routes. You know what I mean? It's not like I saw him running these insane, like, in-and-out routes and just, like, you know, these curl routes and comebacks. Like, I can't say I was seeing that stuff. So I really have no idea what his route running is like he could be good at it but i just did not see it from the highlight video so i give his chances of making the team a 30 percent you know due to the fact that he's versatile and um the giants do have some uh, need for a height for height at uh, tight end so they do have uh levine toilolo who's very tall but not the best receiver so if they can get a receiving threat in rice and john he might have a role on this team i think it's a long shot based off the uh from where he was playing at because that's a pretty big jump going from there to the nfl basically so we'll see if he can do it but if he can then I think the Giants would have no problem taking a 6-7 receiver. Up next is Christian Angelo or Angelo. I think Angelo sounds more official, so I'll go with that. He played cornerback for Hampton, so he's 6'2", 190. That's pretty good length at 6'2". He looks pretty agile, pretty quick on tape. He got his head turned around very nicely on deep balls and did play the deep ball very well. So I think, you know, just like that guy, uh, what was his name, Chris Williamson, I think it was, the uh, seventh round pick we had, he was good at just getting his hand in at the right time. He was not pass interfering. He was waiting for the right time to, you know, hit that ball out at the last second so I saw a lot of good ball skills from uh, Christian Angelo here so the bad of course was the competition level I don't know who Hampton's playing against and he did have some moments of getting beat deep I think his first you know quote-unquote highlight you know highlight was him basically getting beat by like three steps on a deep ball like a post route and the quarterback just, or I don't know, I think it was a reverse play and a wide receiver threw it. That's probably why. The wide receiver severely underthrew that ball on a trick play, and he basically was able to get the interception. So I think, you know, if it was an NFL quarterback, that's an 80-yard touchdown. But considering it was, uh, you know, a wide receiver throwing the ball, he was able to make a play on that ball. But at the same time, he did get beat on that play. He was beat on some other plays that were underthrown, so I have to take that into consideration as well because you kind of have to watch these smaller school guys and translate it to the NFL. Like, would they get away with this in the NFL? I honestly saw a few instances where I don't think these plays would have been made in the NFL, so I had to take that into consideration. So another bad part is they only showed highlights for him. There wasn't like you know any of his uh, full full snaps from an entire game against a certain team, so that's something to take into consideration as well. I gave him a twenty percent chance of making the team, so right now it's you know James Bradbury. They have Sam Beal, who I actually forget about all the time, DeAndre Baker, Darnay Holmes, Julian Love. Um, 
who else? They have Corey Ballantyne. Grant Haley might still be on the roster. So there's a lot of guys right now in the secondary. I don't really see, you know, room for this guy on the roster. If he does have a couple of interceptions and just, you know, makes his name known and forces his way on the roster, then I could definitely see it happening. I'm not sure Gettleman would give up on Sam Beal yet, but if Sam Beal ends up getting hurt, which definitely could happen based off what we've seen, and maybe Corey Ballantyne hasn't progressed since last year, then maybe they give a guy like Christian Angelo or Angelo a, uh, a shot to make the roster. I could definitely see that happening. But if I'm being realistic, I would give it a 20% chance he actually does make it. Up next is Kyle Markway, the tight end from South Carolina, 6'4", 250 pounds. So the good is the competition level. So he plays against teams that are Division I, more official type teams here. So pretty solid blocker. I watched, I think, probably a half of his actual game tape. But when he was asked to block, he did pretty well. So I'll give him that. He uh, Decent speed, you know, decent agility for a tight end. I think he's a reliable pass catcher. Made some pretty tough catches from what I saw. The bad part, only one year of solid production. Did have a couple injuries his first two years in college I forget what the injuries were exactly but he was limited to three games in 2015 and then 2016 I think barely played five games in 2018 then played 11 in 2019 so there might be a bit of an injury history there I looked up you know his name then injury nothing really popped up so I couldn't really like go off that so I'm kind of just guessing this guy didn't play from 2017 uh, 2016 and 2017 for a reason I don't think he like took off and like you know, went to a war or something. I think he probably missed games due to injury. So um, he didn't look dominant out there. I definitely, you know, from uh, last year's comparison, I like CJ Conrad more, the guy from Kentucky we had. I think we actually waved him a couple of days ago, actually. But uh, I liked what I saw more from CJ Conrad on tape last year. I, I can see Kyle Markway having a role, though, in the NFL. I'm not sure he'd fit in on his team because we have a good amount of tight ends. I mean, if they pick up Engram's option, I think he's here next year anyway. That's two years down the line. But um, Engram's going to be here as long as he's healthy. Levine Toilolo is going to be here as long as he's healthy. Uh, Caden Smith's going to be here. I feel like there's one other guy I'm missing. I feel like we signed some other guy in free agency. Uh, I don't know. I could be wrong, but we have at least three tight ends, maybe four. So it would be kind of tough to make it onto the roster. Gave it a 25% chance. He seems like a solid player. He's not going to like do anything to wow you, but he just he gets the job done. He's a pretty solid player. So I think you know if he does come into uh, in, in the training camp and does well, I would not be surprised by it. I'm just not sure he would do enough to open the coach's eyes. But you know if a guy like Jason Garrett or something thinks he could fit in his scheme, then I think he might actually have a chance to make this roster. And if an uh, injury happens to Evan Engram or something, like that then i could definitely see it happening so we'll see how that one plays out in uh, in the training camp and whatnot Next, we have Tyler Haycraft, the offensive tackle slash O-lineman from Louisville. So he's 6'3", 293, better known as the guy that played opposite of Mekhi Becton, who went like uh, 11th overall, I think it was, to the Jets. So he started, I think, every game last year, did not play much before that. He, he might have played like half the year in 2018 and was the full-time starter last season, so that was good for him. So the good, I mean, I put a video in there where he, he was playing really mean. I watched, I think, two games of him, and it showed every, you know, I basically had to search Mekhi. Kai Becton verse and watch this guy. So I was basically watching the guy that they weren't circling in the video, but it still got the job done. So I watched every snap of him, probably, you know, around, you know, 60, 70 plus snaps around there. So that's a pretty good sample size to watch a guy. And um, he was very mean. He was playing mean. He was throwing guys down after the play, was shoving guys after the play was over, which I'm a fan of. I like that stuff. So good competition level at Louisville or Lowellville, as people pronounce it. I don't know what the official one is. I go with Louisville though. Um, so he squares up his blocks nicely. He's a very good run blocker. That's what I noticed for sure. Kind of like Shane Lemieux. I think Shane Lemieux is better in the run game than he is pass blocking, but at the same time, I think he's probably a much better player than Haycraft is, but Haycraft did seem like a very capable run blocker, so I like that about him. So he didn't play in the quote-unquote pro-style offense, which was one of my problems actually with Mekhi Becton when people talked about you know him probably a month or two ago going to the Giants. That was like a rumor going around, and I was like, I'm not sure about that. So he didn't play in a pro-style offense. They just do a lot of like weird motion and quarterbacks always on the run so Louisville kind of runs this weird offense and a little undersized for an NFL tackle I don't see I don't think we see many NFL tackles under 300 pounds I think he would have to move into guard I don't think his arms look that long anyway so I do think this guy, this guy would be definitely be a guard or maybe even a center if they want to try that out so I don't think he would uh, ever start at guard in any in the uh, NFL 
his strength in the NFL is definitely a question because, as I said, 293 pounds is it's not getting it done. I mean, there's guys that are much heavier than that in the uh, in, you know in the next level. So, I mean, we'll see. I have no idea how he's going to translate. I do think he'd be an all right uh, run blocker. Not sure how he'd be in pass blocking. The Giants right now have so many guards on this team. I mean, they have a good amount of offensive line depth for the first time in like forever. So, I mean, that's a good thing. So I think his chances of making the team are pretty low. I gave it a 20% chance to be generous, but honestly, probably like 10% if I had to guess. Up next is Dominique Ross, the linebacker from North Carolina. He's 6'4", 228. So this guy kind of reminded me of Cam Brown once again. I think Cam Brown weighs a bit more, though. So I actually watched him against Duke in a Daniel Jones game. So the only way I can watch Dominique Ross, it was such a pain to watch this guy. I had to search Miles Dornverse, who was the safety for North Carolina. I forget what team he went to, but I think he was like a mid-round draft pick. So I watched him play, and then I had to basically scope out the field and look for number three at linebacker. And when I found him, I, of course, watched him you know, for about an entire game. So he looked pretty athletic. He played the passing lanes really well, showed some man coverage ability. There were some plays where he was just out wide playing like outside cornerback guarding Duke's running back and actually knocked the ball away twice on him. So I was very impressed by that. If this guy's a linebacker that can play the passing lanes and cover running backs, that would be tremendous. So we'll see if there's a, a chance he makes a team for that. He had good pursuit, shoots the uh, gaps pretty well, and you know, decent competition level. It wasn't the worst. I guess for North Carolina, I don't know exactly who they play, but seeing them play against Duke, I guess made it a bit credible. So that makes sense. Um, good speed for a linebacker, not the fastest guy. I would not call him a sideline to sideline linebacker, but he's close to it. So, you know, that's a pretty good thing. The bad bit undersized in terms of weight for an inside linebacker. Now, of course, as the years go on, it seems like inside linebackers just weigh less and less. So he could get by at 228. He probably, you know, he might be even over 228 at this point. So there's that. And his production in college was not that great. So, I mean, you know, his highest tackle season was last year, 60 tackles. But as I said, for um, the Temple defensive end, I forget his name now. Dana Dana Levine, I'm pretty sure that is. Yeah, just like that, he's getting better every year. So I like that about him. I'm not sure how old Dominique Ross is. He's been playing since uh, 2016, so he's probably at least 22, 23. So um, not not sure how much better he can get, but at least I saw potential in uh, pass coverage. I love that for sure. He was a pretty good tackler. I did not see him missing many tackles like I saw with some other guys. Um, you know whether the Giants drafted them or some other free agents. So um, seems like a solid player. I, I could see him making the team. Uh, um, you guys know I have a crush on Tay Crowder, so I could I would rather have Tay Crowder than him. But at the same time, um, Dominique Ross did not seem like a bad player at all, so I, I want to see how he plays in the preseason. I'm curious, but I gave him a 25% chance of making the final 53. Lastly, we have Jaquarius Landrews, the safety defensive back from Mississippi, six feet tall, 200 pounds. So the good part is he showed improvement in 2019 as compared to 2018. He did play in more games, but overall just had much better numbers. So I like that. He has good speed. He wasn't missing tackles in the games I watched, which I definitely love. I always look out for missed tackles. He was doing a good job of finishing his tackles. There were a couple plays where I thought he was about to miss it, but then dragged the guy down at the last second. So that was good to see. He has good anticipation on passing plays. I saw that a few times. He didn't break up any passes from what I saw, but at least he had that pursuit to get to his man quickly when he needed to. Um, had some pretty nice hits for his size as well. He had at least a couple of nice hits out there on defense. The bad part, looks undersized on tape. I mean, I think Xavier McKinney is a similar height and weight to him, but for some reason, McKinney just looks a lot more built than Landrews does, so that's a bit concerning for me. Can he shed blocks in the NFL? Can he tackle a 230, 240-pound running back in the open field? Those are the questions I have have about him so the Giants right now as I said they have a lot of good secondary members they're not too deep at safety I know Michael Thomas went to like the Texans maybe or something he left so there might be a hole at safety somewhere so maybe they take Jaquarius Landers if he impresses them in training camp and preseason it would not surprise me so I can give it a 30% chance which is pretty generous so we'll see how that one plays out but yeah that'll do it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it's actually been over a 30 minute video talking about undrafted free agents so that's pretty crazy um I think maybe a couple guys have a chance to make this team i'm going to try and list my favorite guys right here from this group so my favorites were probably i think austin mack as i said before has a really good chance i like him i think kyle murphy as a deaf piece on the offensive line would not be too bad um maybe kyle markway the tight end if something you know were, were to happen to engram or even caden smith levine Tololo, one of those guys 
I mean, that's pretty much... I like Dominique Ross, but we don't really have much from an inside linebacker nowadays. And I think, you know, Jaquarius Landers is not that bad either. So that's like four or five guys I would have. At least I would give them somewhat of a chance to make the roster. So we'll see if that happens. And maybe Javon Leak if they want to return, man. I don't think it's necessary, but we'll see how that plays out. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Once again, leave me a comment of your favorite player and who you think has the best chance to make this team. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.